I'm on page um, 30 again. Uh, well, he did 30. 2.1.2. And uh, exercise 2.1.1 is show that uh, show that sine x dx from 0 to pi is 2. So let's have a go at that. So we like to show that uh, so we're trying to show that this area here is and we're uh, given Lagrange's identity, and we're allowed to use the fact that when this theta goes to zero, so the ratio of sine theta to theta is, is one. So, uh, you know, let's have a go at this. If we uh, partition, I should make it better. That's the sine curve, zero to one. If I chop this up into n subintervals, so my partition has uh, intervals of size one. I chop it up into n pieces, and it originally goes from zero to pi. Uh, this distance here is pi over n, right? So uh, if we form a, uh, a Cauchy sum, since this is in the Cauchy integral chapter, um, what would a Cauchy sum look like? We take the left endpoint. For some reason, I don't want to break into the hokey pokey so I'm take the left endpoint. Right? Sorry, that's my... <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> that's my problem. I sit in that office with a painting and did it to me. Okay. What does a Cauchy sum look like? It looks like the sum from i equals 1 to n, right? Of, uh, well, in general, f of x i minus 1. Uh, delta x i and okay that's in the general case in the specific case in the specific case here what is it wouldn't it be the sign let's make this k so k just comes across better than i okay i have sine uh, k pi over n, right? That's that's the value of the sign at the at an appropriate place across here. If I'm at the k if I'm at the k sub interval, I take the value at um, k minus one, okay? That's the value at the um, the left, the left hand side. And uh, I multiply that by the width of the k sub interval and sum it up 1 to n. So that's an estimate, a Cauchy estimate, of the area under the sign. Is it not? All right. Now, I, I'm trying to get rid of that k minus 1. I'd like that to be k. Let me re index this. If I'm going from k equals 1 to n and taking 1 away from k, why don't I go from uh, m 
equals zero to n minus one. And I would have sine m pi over n. And then every one of the delta x k's is of the same length as pi over n, right? So the area, that's a Cauchy, that's a Cauchy sum for the area, right? I just re-indexed the time. I can start at zero. So what is this sum? It's 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 uh, zero times pi over n plus uh, sine pi over n times pi over n plus sine two pi over n times pi over n, right? So it's it's uh, pi over n times the sum from t equals one n minus 1 sine t i over n. Okay. Does that look right? And now I think I can I can use this formula. If I take the left endpoints, I never quite get to, I never get to sine of pi. That's a right end. The last term in my sum is going to be sine n minus 1 over n pi times the width of the interval, which is pi over n. So, okay, I'm going to take, uh, now we use Lagrange. And let me make sure that I get this right. Lagrange says that this sum, this sum goes from 1 to n. I'm going from 1 to n minus 1, so I guess I have to subtract something at the end. But this sum is cos pi over 2n minus cos. Uh, 2n plus 1 pi. Over 
you know, let's do this. Let's put a two in there and a two up here. But you have to fill it right. I do. That's right. Just squeeze that two out, out to here. 